Hey crafty people, welcome back to my channel. And in case you're new here, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd, cause I'm a nerd who loves to craft. I do paper crafting, card making, junk journaling, and mixed media art. Let's get crafting. Welcome back to part two of my springtime tab bound booklet. So I finished the binding and I really like how the rainbow of colors looks. Kind of bummed I did not get this one quite as tight as I probably should have cause I don't know how well you can see there's a little gap bitch going on there, but it's attached. Everything's all good. So do a quick flip through. There may be bits and bobs that I started sticking in there. So this is what it looks like all done. Well, all assembled. Now comes the fun part. We're going to start decorating. And the last page. So that's the booklet. I'm going to set it aside for now and we're going to get to working on the various parts. Now, I am planning on using a whole bunch of different die cuts to decorate the booklet. And so I'm going to show you a variety of ways that you can color your die cuts because my default setting tends to be to cut everything out of white cardstock or watercolor paper. And so as a result, I then have to color the pieces if I don't want them white. So we're going to start with this one. Um, and on the last video, I showed you one way to add color to your die cuts, and that was to stamp on them in color. And that's what I did with these two guys. So for this one, I am going to color it with my uh, Distress watercolor pencils. Now, if you don't have Distress watercolor pencils, don't worry. I'm going to be showing you a variety of different ways to color um, your die cuts. So if you can't, if you don't have the pencils, you don't need to go out and buy them. You can just use one of the other methods for coloring that I'm going to show you um, in this video because there are tons of ways to add color to your die cuts. And I'm feeling sunflower-y for this one and I don't know how badly this is glaring and I apologize if you're getting a ton of glare from the tins. Um, and yes, I ended up buying all the colors because I have a real big problem with not buying all the colors. Um, it, I, it's a little better with the Distress inks because they are sold individually, whereas the Distress pencils come in sets. So I, I ended up buying all the sets and I did organize them by color family, kind of like Tim did. I know he showed that in the video he did for the release of the last three sets. Um... Yeah, I, it's one of my failings is that I have this compulsion to have all the colors, even though I don't end up using all the colors. Like it, it, that's, that's the real problem is I don't need all the colors. I know I don't need all the colors, yet I feel compelled to get all the colors. So right now I'm just going to go over it all with the pencil and let's see, let's zoom in a little. There we go. And I'm going to just add I'm using squeeze lemonade for my petals and then I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard seed down the middle of each just to give some color variation don't know if you can hear on the video my dog snoring <laughs> but he is passed out on the couch and I can I can hear it it seems really loud to me all right now I'm gonna grab a paintbrush with a little bit of clean water on it and I'm just gonna come in a little less clean water on it and blend the petals out I'm just moving my water over so that it's by my right hand so I don't have to reach across the product project to get to the water because that increases the chances of you dripping stuff on your project that you don't want. I'm just going to blend this all out. All 
All right, we're gonna move on to the stem, although I'm probably gonna come back in and add a little bit more color to the petals once they are dry. Probably go over them. You know what, those are dry enough. All right, I'm gonna come back in and add just a little bit more to a few of the petals because I can tell they're still white showing. I also think after I blend this time around, I'm gonna add, so I'm using squeeze lemonade right now just to add a little bit more pigment to the paper. I'm gonna come in and blend again. Hold this up close to my face because my eyesight, she ain't, she ain't as, as, she's never been good, but she's definitely not as good as she used to be. And I hope I'm still on screen, yes, okay. So yeah, the, my setup does not allow me to actually see what's on camera while I'm filming. I have to get up and look through my phone. Um, and it also means I'm kind of just not, not always able to get my head over my project to see what I'm doing. All right, I'm coming back in and adding some more mustard seed, especially down at the bottom of the petals and a little bit up the middle. All right, I think the petals are good. Um, I may off camera when I take a look at it, if I see it needs some touching up, touch up, but we've got the base of the flower done. Let's pull out some green and I am gonna go for, I'm gonna grab crushed olive and go over again, like I did with the petals and just apply some ink to the leaves. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of mowed lawn to give some brightness. And we're gonna start with that and see what else we might wanna add. And again, just adding water to activate the pencil and blend it. And I'm not bothered about getting it on my mat because it'll just clean off fairly easily since it's a watercolor pencil. I definitely want the stem darker, especially since we've got a yellow flower. I want more depth or more darkness in the stem to give us some contrast. So I'm gonna go back in with some more mowed lawn on some places that don't have enough color. Then I'm gonna add a teeny bit of forest moss just because I don't want it too bright. Let's blend away, see where we get. Now I'm pulling out some rustic wilderness. I'm just fiddling around because these are new to me. I don't have them like swatched yet. So it's kind of just guesswork as to which color <laughs> will get me where I want to be right now. And you can go over wet spots with the crayon. It's just gonna leave your tip wet. And I noticed when I did part one and I colored the flowers in with them and I like wet the tip, which you can, I can take a brush to it and pull pigment off. It softens the pencil up. And so you got to really wait to let it dry, especially before you try and color like a 
with a pencil as if it was a pencil again. Um, so that's why I'm avoiding doing it now because I don't feel like waiting for it to dry like I had to with the pink last time. A little bit more rustic wilderness. All right, I think I'm happy with the stem now. So yeah, it's just fiddle around with it till you get something you are happy with. And I'll be honest, this is the first time I'm using my Distress Watercolor Pencils to color a die cut. And I honestly think I like the next technique we're gonna use better. So. All right, and now we need to do the center of our sunflower and we're gonna start with some light brown and then do a dark brown um so what i'm gonna start with is we're gonna start with tea dye because even even with watercolor you know easier to start light and go dark than to reverse um, in most things all right And I'm just brushing a little bit up onto my flower petal bases. Soften that blend into the flower by adding a little bit more water. And I'm looking at those petals and they need more yellow on the edges. Like the top edge just doesn't have enough yellow. So I'm gonna bring in some more yellow right now. Blend the yellow while my center is drying. and Hopefully finally get it fully covered. It's just so hard for me to tell from here. I've got to hold it up close to my face to see what's covered and what's not. Uh, I'd say it's a sign of me getting older, but no, it's just a sign of me having bad eyesight. Um, all right. I think what I want to do now that the sensor's dry is I'm going to add a little vintage photo in. Just the center part. Blend that around a bit. Let it dry. Actually, you know what? Let me grab my heat tool. And now I'm gonna come in with the scorched timber and do circly dots. And we are gonna blend this out so it's a little less pronounced. And I may come back in and do some more of that after we blend out. And I'm just grabbing a like bigger brush so that I can kind of 
do this instead of scribbling around like I was doing with the smaller brush, just to kind of soften it out. I'm looking at it going, needs to be a little darker and then it needs some of the, hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna hit it with the heat tool again. I'm gonna come in, because I want that center a little darker. I'm gonna come in and add a little walnut stain just lightly on there. I'm gonna blend that around. Oh, that did not do. I ended up taking it off more so than uh, adding color on. All right, let's try with our smaller brush. I've got a bunch of other paint brushes, but they're in, um, I was using them. Yeah, if you notice my fingers are interesting colors, it's because I was using, I was working on the Christmas card project from Wednesday and I think I'm just getting this too wet and I've got pilling going on. Because I thought I used watercolor paper to die cut this. But I may be mistaken and it may be regular cardstock. And that's, um, yeah, I'm adding too much water to regular cardstock. <laughs> All right, we're gonna just go back in and add dots again now that that's dry. And then I'm gonna leave this alone because yeah, I thought I was working on watercolor paper and I'm working on regular cardstock, which cannot hold up to as much water. Um, so that's... Um, our flower and we're gonna leave that one alone and it's done and I'm gonna move on to the next technique for coloring your die cuts. All right, so the next technique, we're gonna use Distress Inks to color our flowers. Um, and I'm doing some of the, uh, what are these? These are the Brush Stroke Flowers Mini and that's 666284. And I pulled out my Alton New Matte because these pieces are really, really small, and I have a feeling it's gonna make life easier if I put these guys on the mat to color them than if I try and color them freestanding, especially the like teeny tiny little bits that come with this. Cause there's like itty bitty dots that die cut out. That, and then that piece, which that's ridiculously small, that piece, which is just insane. <laughs> and they all cut from one die, so that's why I ended up cutting them all out of white instead of maybe cutting, like this would be something I'd consider cutting out of colored cardstock, just so I don't have to color it. Um, let's see. So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna take my ink. Which I am gonna be doing a mixture of shaded lilac which I'm just putting it on my acrylic block. And actually, let's get a piece of white paper to go behind so we can actually see where our color is. Look at that, now we can see the color. So as you can see, I've got color over here. I've got my little flowers over here and I can actually shift a little more so that we can shift this over and still be on screen, yay. Um, and I'm gonna grab a little tilted violet just to add a little oomph. And to, similar to what we did before, I'm just gonna add some water to my Distress Ink, pick it up on a paintbrush, and paint with it. So it's essentially another watercolor technique. And these are cut out of regular cardstock, so I'm gonna be judicious in my application of water. I'm not gonna put a ton of water on them, but this technique doesn't require a ton of water. Pretty much just a little bit of water mixed in with the ink to just help it flow. Now, for that part, I'm gonna mix the Wilted Violet, violet and Shaded Lilac together. Um, 
a little bit more water. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take a spray bottle and spritz some water on here just to get everybody a little wet. Oh, got some hairs. They're not sticking completely to the mat, but I think this is working better than not having them on the mat. So there we go. Now, another option always is, is to ink up a piece of paper before you die cut and then die cut. Um, the one thing with the flowers is all of the parts are attached in like one die. So you'd have to die cut it multiple times, which isn't always a horrible thing. Um, for the center of the flower, I'm just gonna use a little bit of squeezed lemonade, adding a little bit of water to my brush to help get the ink moving. And I'm gonna apply the ink. Not that you can really see it all that well, but it's yellow. And this is one of those dyes, if you get the set, I highly recommend you keep the packaging because it really does help with trying to figure out what pieces are supposed to be kept and go where and assembly and all that sort of stuff. Because yeah, this is one of those sets, every time I die cut it out, I pull this out as reference. Um, these guys need to dry. While they are drying, let's work on some leaves show you those as well. Let's, you know what, let's move those out of the way. I'm gonna leave the little dots where they are because otherwise they're gonna get lost. In fact I was doing some other of these flowers and I lost one of the teeny tiny bits but I had die cut out like a lace doily um, which I had die cut this out and still had some of the little pieces uh, available so I just grabbed one of the little pieces from there and stuck it in. Worked like a charm. Alright I am gonna start with Twisted Citron which I think I have out which I know is like bright um, and again, I'm using Distress inks. You could do this with Distress Oxides. I just don't have as big of a palette of Distress Oxides. And I've honestly been using Distress inks for so much longer that I'm way more familiar with them and the color that I'm going to get using them. And that's a little too much water. So let's add a little more ink on here. Again, just want to get the ink flowing. And just paint it on and we are going to mix colors in um, on top of this to tone down the brightness. I just, especially for a spring project, think the bright green is a good starting spot. Then I'm going to come in with a little bit of shabby shutters. And I'm going to mix the two together to kind of tone down the see. And as it dries, it lightens up because we're doing a watercolory effect. So I'm just going to go back over with my mixture. Add a little bit more depth to them. And then for the top pieces, I'm going to go more shabby shutters so that we've got some contrast. And I'm just picking up the water that's already on the palette from spritzing for the Twisted Citron. So it may pick up a little of the Twisted Citron and mix it in, but not all that much. So we should be fine and it'll give us variety in our color.
I'm gonna let those dry completely. And while those are drying, I think our flowers are dry enough that we can pull those back over and do assembly. And you want them to be completely dry before you assemble because the glue is just gonna adhere better if they are dry versus trying to adhere them when they are wet. It's just gonna end up being a mess. So let me get out my art glitter glue. This is definitely something you're gonna want a fine tipped glue for doing. And I'm gonna grab my tweezers. And let's start with this piece. And I'm gonna put the labely piece where I can see it. That I can kind of, and there are indents, um, but sometimes, especially if you're doing a wet technique, you lose the detail there. I think that's right. Yeah, it goes like there ish. goes like that and then for the center bits I find it's easier to apply the glue to the piece and then I'll use my uh, quick stick which has sticky stuff at one end that makes it easy to pick these pieces up place them down and do that and then again for this one I put a little out of glue in the center there. Use my quick pick to pick it up and stick it down. And try and stick it down. One problem with the really small pieces is sometimes the quick stick is too sticky and they don't want to let go. All right, so there we go. That's our flower. Up so you can get a good look at it. So that's what the flower looks like. And then our leaves are dry enough now, we can finish assembling them. To try and figure out what goes on which one where. All right, these go with those leaves. This stuff all goes with this leaf. All right, let's start with this guy. Just add glue to the back. This one goes on this leaf here. And I probably should, I was thinking about it, and you know what, now that I am, I will grab my Barely Arts glue, because that gives a little bit more wiggle time, and this needs a little wiggle in sometimes, because I don't always get them in the right spot right away. All right, this guy's gonna go on here. And there we go. And let's do these two. And then I'll hold them up closer to the camera so you can get a better look. There are our leaves. Let me hold them up for you to see. 
So that's what they look like up close. The bits that look kind of white on screen are not that white in real life. <laughs> like, isn't it, the, the, the close-up is uh, making them look whiter than they are. Okay, for our next technique, we are just going to brush on the ink like we would with um, stenciling. So I've got Distress Ink in Spun Sugar, and I'm just going to add some to this flower. And I actually think what I may do is grab just a blank piece of paper so I don't have to worry as much about getting it on the stems. Just be careful with something this delicate that you don't go too rough in applying the ink with the brush. I may need to re-inker this, which I don't think I have the re-inker for my spun sugar, but I'm going to add some more color in in a sec. I actually have, I think I have spun sugar and distress oxide. Let me double check. I do. So we're going to mix in some distress oxide and spun sugar. So we're going to add a little distress oxide spun sugar. And I want to add some variation to the color. So I'm going to grab Kitsch Flamingo if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. And add a little Kitsch Flamingo as well. I'm thinking I'm going to add it in the center. Add a little over on some of the edges. Just this way it's not all one color and I think I want to pull in a little bit more of the oxide spun sugar over here and let me check do I have I do have oxide in Kitsch Flamingo I'm going to add a little bit of that as well Okay, now we are going to cover the flower up and work on the stem. And I'm going to grab... All right, if you've got too dark of a color on your brush and you want to clean it off before inking, I suggest spraying just a little bit of water on a cloth, rub it on there, and then rub it on a dry spot until you take off some of the darker color from your brush. Um... This is, this is mostly staining at this point, but the idea is just to get some of the dark ink off because if you go into a light ink with a dark ink coating your brush, you're gonna end up having it darker than you intended. And it's always best to go from light to dark. This way, if you're using, like I have a small brush for greens. So if I'm using light and dark colors, I need to start with my light color and then work my way down to my darker color. So I've got Twisted Citron right now. And when talking about cleaning the brush, I meant to point out, you don't want to get your brush too wet or it's going to impact the application of the color to your um, paper. Um, so that's, that is why I do it that way. So I keep it mostly dry. If, if you want your brushes clean, um, wait until you're done using them for the day. And then that way you can leave them to dry. If you're going to clean them off in like a sink and like fully rinse them, you're going to need to leave them dry for at least a day, if not more. Um, but I don't think it's really necessary. The cleaning off that way usually is sufficient to um, get my brushes clean enough to do what I'm going to be doing. And now I'm coming in with a little shabby shutters and darkening it up in spots. You'll see I'm being a little haphazard in the application because it doesn't necessarily need to be everywhere. I'm just trying to get 
some variation in the color. Let's take a look and see how we like that. I think I want to pull in some more darker green. And so I'm going to grab, I think we're going to pull in a little bit more of mode lawn because I don't necessarily want to go as dark as rustic wilderness. So I'm going to get a little mode lawn in there. And again, I'm just kind of applying it a little haphazardly so that we've got variation in our color. And so there we go. Now you can also, since this is a Distress Ink, apply a little bit of water to it. And I am gonna use, I think I'm gonna just use a wet paintbrush um, to splatter a few drops of water on there so that I'll get some smaller splatters. I think I'm getting everywhere but on the piece. Now just leave it sit for a second to reactivate your ink and then take a clean cloth, which this is clean, it's just stained. <laughs> All of my cloths are stained at this point. So just to lift up a little bit of the ink and so you'll get some spots that are, you'll get little watermark spots on there. So you can also splatter it with some ink I may do that for the, the branches or the, the stem and the leaves. So I may just go like this. So I don't want to get it all over my mat. I'm going to go like that. Lift that leaf above. I'll grab some of the mowed lawn. Put it on an acrylic block. Add a little bit of water. Load up my brush. And I think I need more ink. Yeah, I think I definitely need a little bit more ink because my ink to water ratio is a little off. You need it enough to get it moving, but um, it will dilute the color when you add water to it. So And recognize when you are splattering, um, it's <laughs> controlled chaos, semi-controlled chaos. So you're gonna get splatters where you get splatters. Um, and so there's a few splatters on there. Um, if you really want full control, you can take a paintbrush, dip it in and say, I want a dot of green there and some there and there. And I'm going to go need, need to go deal with dogs because apparently there's something setting them off. So for something like this where it's a small space, you can go in with a paintbrush and just add your dots of color. If you don't get them where you want when you splatter, I'll be back. Okay, so the next method for adding color to our die cuts is I'm going to use some embossing glaze and embossing ink. Um, and you can use, instead of embossing glaze, if you don't have embossing glaze, you can use embossing powder. Um, I am going to do one half of the butterfly at a time. And I'm just using this paper for catching the excess ink. And then a clean piece of paper to catch the excess embossing powder. And I am going to hit this with my embossing gun. Um, actually, let's, let's, let's do some cleanup first. And so the purpose of the paper is to be able to put the embossing powder back in. I've done that. Close this up, set it out of the way and bring my embossing gun over. Um, and if you wait a few seconds, like if you turn it on, wait a few seconds before applying it, it will um, emboss faster, generally speaking, because it needs to heat up a little bit, but I tend to just point it at the thing as soon as I turn it on. Okay, 
And the spots that didn't get very much, we can go back in and add a little bit more uh, glaze. And then a little bit more powder. And I'm gonna grab a scoop this time so I can be a little bit more targeted in my application. Now, if you're applying a second coat, just be careful if you haven't covered it completely. Like I've just put it in select spots. Um, when you emboss that you don't um, heat the areas that you haven't added more power, powder to too much. Um, I'm just gonna do this off screen so I can see what I'm doing. And once that cools off a little bit, because if I stick my tweezers into it while it's still hot, it'll add an indent into my embossing. All right, and I'm uh, going to do a second coat just to get those spots that I missed. So there we go. Now we've got our lovely butterfly colored and shiny from the embossing powder. So that was, I think, option number three for adding color to our emboss our die cuts um, and I'm gonna show you one more technique for uh, coloring and your die cuts and, and so we're just gonna do some like ink smooshing uh, I'm gonna put some distress ink on the mat I'm gonna grab the colors I've been using for our grassy areas some twisted citron a little bit of mowed lawn and a little bundle sage and I am going to spritz my mat, spritz my pieces, kind of mix the colors together and just smoosh my grasses in. Now it's very wet right now, so it's moving around a lot. I'm gonna use my heat gun to Dry this off some. Actually, I'm gonna set that aside and get this one done. Again, I'm gonna add some water to it. So our first layer is kind of just to get a base color on there since I don't want any white showing. So having it very wet and smooshy works for doing that. All right, now I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool. And then we're just gonna tap it in in various spots on the map. Mat. Map. Oh, it's getting to the end of the day. I'm gonna set that one aside and grab this guy in and just add a little bit more water in spots just kind of tap it around till you're happy with it
I'm just trying to make sure I've got enough on the blades of grass, inkwise. A little bit more ink onto the mat, just because again, the blades of grass are kind of light on color. I'm just gonna take a towel and dab those dry a little bit because they were very wet. Um, just need a little bit more on there and there. Alright, I'm going to set that aside to dry naturally and have a bit of a cleanup here. And therefore our last option for adding color to our die cuts is we can cut them out of colored cardstock like I did for this guy. But I want to add a little bit more depth to it so I'm going to grab a brush and some... Let's go with brush corduroy distress oxide and what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of ink to it and I think I need to go darker grab a little scorched timber and just add a little bit of ink here and there just to give it so it's not so flat. Like I find when I die cut out of colored paper, I find it a little too flat. But if you add a little bit of distress inks, you can, or other inks that you might have that you ink blend with, um, you can add a little bit more interest to the piece than if you just leave it plain. So there you can see it's got a little bit of variety in its color. Um, so that it's not just the plain light brown. We've got idea number six, which is adding die cutting out of colored cardstock and adding some depth with distress inks or other inks to blend with. Idea number five is to uh, smoosh ink onto uh, your craft mat and smoosh it onto your die cuts. Um, number four, was uh, embossing glaze on your die cuts, or you could use embossing powders. Um, I don't remember which order I did these in, so we're gonna go with number three is watercoloring with your distress inks. Number four, number four. N this is what happens when you are near the end of the day and are counting backwards. And <laughs> number two was we use makeup brushes to blend ink onto our piece and then did a little bit of splattering. And number one was we colored with our Distress watercolor pencils. So those are all of the ideas for how to color your die cuts. Um, and unfortunately, I have pretty much run out of time because, oh, I've, I've got tons of die cuts that I've been coloring off camera. And it's pretty much eaten up this whole day. And I don't have enough time to do anything else for this video um so we will be definitely coming back for a part three where we're going to actually you know start assembling and hopefully by then i'll have everything because as much as i've done today i still have more that needs to be colored in order to finish up our tab bound booklet because yeah there's a lot of space to cover on this sucker a lot of space to cover on it so um that's all for today if you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.